Hadith number 16, page 27. The world is a prison for a believer. Ad-dunya sijnul mu'mini wa jannatul kafir. Rawahu Muslim an Abi Hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. The world is a prison for the believer and a paradise for the disbeliever Muslim. Commentary. A true believer is restricted and governed by the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect of his life. Therefore, he ought to follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not his desires, which is similar to that of a prisoner whose freedom is restricted. On the contrary, a disbeliever can lead his life in whatever way he wishes and desires, thus a paradise for him in this world. It can also mean that this world is a prisoner for the believer in comparison to the blessings and rewards prepared for him in the next world and paradise for a disbeliever in comparison to the punishment that awaits him in the next world. In the same way, a true believer's desire is to leave this world and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hence a prison. Whereas a disbeliever's desire is to live in this world forever, hence paradise. <clears throat> so, subhanAllah, we can see for ourselves, many times our Muslim brothers and sisters will be saying, we can't do this, we can't do that. We are restricted. Obviously, we are restricted by the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't just follow our own desires because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, He has created life and death. He wants to test us. So this world is a test. So we need to follow a guideline. Like a person in prison, he has a 24-hour timetable. A student in madrasa, he has a 24-hour timetable. So we have a 24-hour timetable, a lifetime timetable from birth till death, from morning till dusk. We need to follow these guidelines. We can't do things that are not right for us to do. Like for example, we have come to the course today. So we have breaks. So we need to take the breaks at the right time. We can't just take the break at the time when we are studying. So in the same way, we have five divine appointments with Allah. Fajr, Zuhar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. So we need to perform them at the right time. So we can't at that time think we continue sleeping, we continue eating, we continue uh, playing about. No, no. We need to follow the guidelines. So like a prisoner, he follows the guidelines of the prison officers in the same way we need to follow the guidelines of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And a kafir, he doesn't have no guidelines. He doesn't follow Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he can do whatever. So... The similarity in Jannah, we will get everything that we will want. For you, everything is that you desire and everything that you want. You know what tashtahi from the word shahwa means anything that we want in, wanted in this world, we couldn't get, we'll get it in paradise. Tadda'un is when we, our minds is going to be unlimited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to broaden our mind. Then we will want this, we'll want that. So all those things that we'll want at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ And all these things are just a starter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نُزُلًا مِّنْ غَفُورِ الرَّحِيمِ Nuzul, in Arabic language, نَزَلَ يَنْزِلْ utarna. So the Arabs, they used to call Nuzul the first breakfast or the first starter which is prepared for the guest. Where the host prepares for the guest, the hospitality, that's called Nuzul. So when the Arab guest comes after dismounting from his horse or camel. He comes and the host, he gives him zamzam water, dates or grapes, whatever. That's called nuzul. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that whatever you desire and whatever you wish and want, this is just a starter. Wait for the main course. This is what we're going to get in Jannah. So a person needs to keep in mind, if he can keep that in mind, that this life is very short. And we just have to spend it properly. And then inshallah ta'ala we will get Jannah in the hereafter. What's the purpose of this person? Like Allah Mashabir Ahmad Usmani Rahimahullah ta'ala mentions Tafsir Uthmani. That a person, a disbeliever, he is like an example of a person that he is told that he's going to be hanged. He's going to be hanged. He's going to be beheaded. And before that, he is told, okay, whatever you like to eat, you eat. Kurma, biryani, pilau, whatever is your favorite. All these fast food you want to eat or anything that you desire, you can have it. But after that, what is going to happen? You're going to be beheaded. So what kind of food is he going to eat? 
This is exactly the same for a disbeliever who doesn't listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will have everything that he desires, but when he closes his eyes, that's it. Punishment starts. And the example of a believer is, for example, you've gone to a service station, it's very low class. There's no water facilities. There's no food available. But you know, subhanAllah, we're soon reaching our destination within an hour. There, mashallah, five-star hotel is waiting for us. So you'll say, forget that, that doesn't matter, we'll just... Uh, have five ten minutes rest here and then we'll get onto our coach or our car and then we'll be reaching our destination so he will not be bothered about all this the same way this world we shouldn't be bothered have you got enough food have you got enough drink have you got enough clothing have you got enough facilities and this and that because he knows his end destination is jannah subhanallah so in looking at the future in that situation then subhanallah this world will look like a prison for him because Jannah is waiting for him. And for a disbeliever, subhanallah, he knows that he will have to face the consequences, the retribution. So, for whatever he has here, that's a Jannah for him. Like the hadith mentions, a person who had the best of time in this world, if he was put into the fire of Jahannam just for a second and taken out, and he is asked that, did you ever find any happiness in this world? He said, no. Vice versa, if a person has gone through the hardest tribulations and trials in this world, and then he is dipped into Jannah just for a second and is taken out. He said, did you ever go through any hardship in this world? He said, no. That is what Jannah is waiting. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for us. So, in comparison to the hereafter, that's the thing we have to remember. Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was mounted on his horse and he had his entourage with him and they were traveling they found a person who wasn't a believer and he was digging in the scorching heat so he looked at Hussein radiallahu ta'ala and who said your grandfather the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said this hadith dunya sijnul mu'minu jannatul kafir that this world is a prison for a believer and a paradise for a disbeliever. But we see completely different. Look at me in the scorching heat. I am working, laboring day and night, toiling away. And you are, subhanallah, on your horse, aram. You've got all the shade. You've got all the khuddam. You've got all the entourage and all the servants and everything. So I don't understand this hadith. Then he explained that this is referring when we compare that with the akhirah. That for you, this world is Jannah when you see the retribution and the punishment of the hereafter. And this, whatever I'm getting, whatever this is, when I see the blessings and the bounties and the ni'mah and the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah, I will call this a prison for us. Subhanallah. So in both ways, whilst we're living here and in comparison to the hereafter, we'll have that same feeling. So this is the thing that we have to keep in mind. That a person who is a true believer, Tuhfatul Mu'mini al maut believers tuhfa gift is death because he's always wanting to meet allah man ahabba liqa allah ahabba allah liqaahu the person who loves to meet allah allah loves to meet him wa man kariya liqa allah kariya allah liqaahu but the disbeliever he dislikes meeting allah so allah dislikes meeting him so for a person he is a prison he wants to go and meet like a person in prison he wants to meet his family members his wife his children so he's always wanting to get out so a true believer he wants to get out from this world like Shaykh Allah, this Mullah Muhammad Zakaria sahab, rahmatullah, alayhi, saw in his dream the angel of death and he said when are you going to take my ruh because these people wanted to go and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the angel of death said no you still got things to do here Allah is going to take more khidmat from you so after that he comes to the UK and he comes to Darul Umbari subhanallah he goes to Zambia to the other madrasa so the point here is subhanallah this world is a prison for the believer in that sense. We can't do everything according to our own desires. We have to listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's for a very small amount of time. Like I mentioned when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask, how long did you stay in this world? So some people say we only lived for one hour. So this is how much we have to go through. Bit of perseverance here. Then inshallah ta'ala, Ya ayyuhatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbika radiyatam murdiya. Then all nafsi mutma'inna content nafs, now you return back to your house. To your home, your father's home. Irji'i. Allah uses the word irji'i. He didn't say izhabi. Because that was our home. We just came here for some time. We're going back like a person goes for a holiday, comes back home. Irji'i la rabbik. You are happy, Allah is happy with you. 